Good evening, I'm Cynthia McFadden. We're learning much more tonight about the government's secret program to eavesdrop on the U.S. It may have involved spying on millions of Americans, not just a few highly suspicious characters. That's according to the whistleblower, who speaks exclusively to ABC News tonight, a man who may now face a government investigation for his candor. ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, joins us now. Brian. Cynthia blowing the whistle on alleged illegal acts inside the secret world of spies and satellites is a tricky act, as 44-year-old Russ Tice is finding out. The former intelligence officer wants the Congress and the American public to know something is wrong, but if he gives away too much, he could be the one who ends up in prison. I feel like the, you know, the striptease artist, and, and I'm, I'm not really giving you the goods here. I'm just flashing a leg and some arm and, and <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of cheek or something. Russ Tai spent 20 years working in the shadows, helping the United States spy on other people's conversations around the world. Well, I specialize in what's called special access programs. These programs are very closely held. Only very few people have access to these programs. So you worked with the most secret of the operations uh, this country conducts? That's correct. Tice is now coming forward to allege wrongdoing in those secret programs run by the Defense Department and the NSA in the post-9-11 efforts to go after terrorists. The mentality was we need to get these guys and we're going to do whatever it takes to get them. You have written uh, to the United States Senate and said you're prepared to talk about what you call unlawful and unconstitutional acts conducted while you were an intelligence officer at the NSA. That's correct. What are you talking about? Well, it involves these special access programs uh, that are closely held. We call them black world programs and operations. Until President Bush gave the approval after the 9-11 attacks, the NSA says it did not eavesdrop on Americans without a court warrant. From a very young age in a career, it's drummed into your head that you will not spy against Americans. And that was the number one commandment of the Ten Commandments. But you're saying you saw things and are aware of things that were done unlawfully at the NSA. I believe so, yes. Ty says the technology exists to track and sort through every domestic and international phone call as they are switched through centers like this one in New York and search for key words or phrases that terrorists might use. If you pick the word jihad out of a, out of a conversation, the technology exists that you, you focus in on that conversation and you pull it out of the, the system, the processing. Ty says intelligent analysts then develop graphs called spider webs, like this one, linking one suspect's phone number to hundreds or thousands more. What associations of numbers does that number call? And you make little spiders from each one of those points to determine, you know, where those communications are going. But Tice says the potential number is likely in the millions if the full range of secret NSA programs was used. That would mean for most Americans that if they conducted or, or, or you know, placed uh, overseas communications, more than likely they, they were sucked into that vacuum if that scenario is correct. The fact that the NSA has now admitted it has been conducting surveillance on Americans without a court order. How has that gone over with you and with others uh, who you used to work with inside the NSA? You, you feel betrayed that your leadership you know, has gone against the tenants um, that you've been taught your entire career. Ty surfaced as a whistleblower on the same day the New York Times broke the story of the NSA eavesdropping without court warrants. The Times had more than a dozen sources and Tice told ABC News he was one of them and now expects to be under criminal investigation. Do you regret doing that? No, I don't regret that at all. Um, I'm bringing out some things that need to be addressed. Um, we need to clean up the intelligence community. We've had abuses and they need to be addressed. Are you concerned you could be prosecuted, sent to prison for talking to the New York Times and, and talking to us today? As far as I'm concerned, as long as I don't say anything that's classified, um, I'm not worried. Intercepting the conversations and communications between Osama bin Laden and his al-Qaeda deputies and followers around the world, including in the U.S., has been a high priority since the 9-11 attacks, and a huge success, according to Tice. Wouldn't that potentially save American lives, stop terror attacks? True, yeah, it potentially could. So what's wrong with that? If we've basically come to the conclusion that we don't mind spying on you know, millions of Americans to 
to find you know a few bad eggs or some terrorists, um, then and, and that's a consensus. Then okay, but uh, I think you have to pretty much rewrite the Bill of Rights and and change the laws around to uh, to adjust for that. Tice lost his job last May after the NSA revoked his security clearances, citing psychological reasons, which Tice calls Cynthia a lot of bunk. So, Brian, what's next? Well, he wants to testify before Congress, but the NSA is concerned. They sent this letter to him today saying he is not free to testify because staff members on Capitol Hill do not have the security clearances high enough to hear the secrets he has to tell.